Today's video is sponsored by Pouch. All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today's video should be a good one because you join me this morning in my L405 Range Rover as I go to pick up an L322 Range Rover, which I bought a couple of days ago from a viewer. I haven't seen this car yet. I've had it delivered to me. So I thought I'd bring you guys along for a quick tour of it. The amateur detectives amongst you might have worked out that I'm a big Range Rover fan. In fact, it's, it borders sycophantic. I just think they're the best cars on the road. Once you've owned one, I mean a proper full-size Range Rover, I don't mean any of the inferior models. Once you've owned one, there is no going back. I can't see any ever being without one. They just do everything I ask of it incredibly well. Yes, they're expensive to run, and no, they're not as reliable as an old Corolla, but I still think the positives far outweigh the negatives. Anyway, what I bought today is the last of the old shape, known as the L322. Now, the L322 ran from 2002 until 2012, when they replaced it with this model, the L405. The L322 received its final facelift in 2009 where it got chunkier bumpers and a new interior. And what I've bought is a 2012 last 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 of that generation. The actual model I've bought is interesting too. You see when Range Rover in the final chapters, they release a limited edition model called a Westminster. That's what I've bought. I like the name Westminster. It suits the Range Rover perfectly. It symbolises power and importance and illegal garden parties. This Range Rover Westminster that I bought uses, in fact, the same engine as this. It's a 4.4 litre turbo diesel V8, which, in my opinion, is the best engine to go for in a Range Rover. I'm a bit gutted they've axed it for the new model. The only diesel you can buy is a 3 litre straight 6, which, okay, I've not driven yet, but I just know it won't be as creamy as this. On to price, then. This particular Range Rover had a trade price of around £14,500, with a suggested retail of around £18,500 to £19,000, depending on condition. Now, I know that sounds like quite a big margin, but Range Rovers are always quite, quite prepsome. They always require quite a lot of prep or preparation before you can sell them, hence the, the larger margin. Based on the seller's description to me, I thought it's never worth 14 and a half grand this, and I've got to go and get it, so I've got to allow for delivery. So I made an offer of 13.5, which he accepted. So my plan was, the car owes me 13,500 pounds, spend around 1,500 pounds on it, so it owes me 15,000 pounds, and then hopefully it should be worth 18 or 19 grand, which will return me a decent profit margin of around 20%. But in the world of Range Rovers, sometimes they don't go quite to plan. For example, with this one, I know it's due a service. It was last serviced at 82 and it's now done 92. So I'll give it a full engine service. I'll also give the gearbox a service, just because I always do, and prevention's better than the cure. It's got a long MOT until December, so I don't need to do an MOT. He said the ride's very bouncy. So straight away, I thought that's a, a blown shock absorber. I know it's got air suspension on the back or air bags instead of springs, but they still have shockers. So if it's got a bouncy ride, that's what I suspect it'll be. Fingers crossed that's all it is. So see what I mean? This 1500 pound budget to prepare it for sale will be eaten up very quickly. This is the trouble. In addition to it being a great spec, it's also in a great color. It's in Santorini black with an ivory interior. Now I love a Range Rover with a pale interior. I just think it oozes class and elegance and sophistication. Some people prefer black with black, but I just find the dark interior is a bit dingy. Anyway, let's go and have a butcher, shall we? Sorry to disappoint, but we're not heading into the woods today. I'm starting to get a reputation that I would rather not have. So we're heading to my office building in the village. It's parked on the car park of the office. So yeah, we're heading there. See you in a second. Right, well, here she is. Santorini black with a pale interior. We've got color-coded door handles, which is always a good sign. Always looks better. Side steps that are fixed. We've got a whatever brand that is, Dylan. Hmm, not the greatest of brand, is it that? The wheels could do with being refurbished as well. A little bit corroded. Good looking car though that. Oh by the way, I've just bought that SC430 and that old LS, so I'll have to do a video with those two. It's got an overfinch badge there, which I don't like, so that's going to be pulled off. It's hard to tell in this weather, but it does look quite straight. It's very dirty, but I think it'll clean up well. But well, we've got matching tyres all round anyway, which is always good. Yeah, those alloys definitely need refurbing. Obviously got the later style lights. 
it's just filthy isn't it hmm quite straight though it's just very very grubby let's have a look inside then yeah it is very grubby this nothing that won't clean up though it's got the later rotary dial there which means it's got the eight speed automatic gearbox not the the earlier six speed that you'd get with the 3.6 well let's fire up then see how many warning lights we've got straight away we've got a low key battery clear that well that's it let's get some heat on shall we heated steering wheel heated seats Yeah, as you can see, this pale interior is quite difficult to keep clean, so it just looks very grubby. Got a sunroof. CD changer there. Book pack, warranty book pack. Right, service history then. So. It's a Newcastle car or a Northeast car, NU12. So I'm expecting the first few to be, there we go, Stockton on T's. Let's have a look. So the first one's done 8,000 miles in 2013 at Stratstone Land Rover Stockton. The second one was done at oh, Bentley. That's interesting. Somebody's obviously traded it in when it was two years old against the Bentley and they've sold it on. So we've got one at eight, one at 18. Another one at Gateshead Land Rover at 28, and then an independent in Leeds at 42. Then back to Land Rover, Land Rover Bradford at, doesn't say the mileage actually, but if that was 16 at 42, and then another one at 18, July 18 at 62. We can assume that Land Rover one was at some point in between then, can't we? So maybe perhaps 52. They left it every 10,000. Last one at 62. We're currently on, let's have a look, currently on 92. So hang on. Oh, there's another one here. We've got one more service, a full service at 78, at an independent place. So 78, so 92, so 14,000 miles. We'll have to get that service then. I'll give it a full engine service. Service the box as well. Not been in one of these for a while, you know. They're quite nicely, nicely appointed. I always like the horn buttons on these. Just nice and delicate. Anyway, what else can I tell you about it? I think rather than waste any time, I'll get all the bits ordered that I need. When I do any kind of shopping online like this, I always use Pouch. Now Pouch is a free desktop browser extension, which automatically finds and applies discount codes, which will save you money. I'll leave the link below in the description so you can have a play around with it yourself. So if I go to eurocarparts.co.uk, type in my vehicle reg, NU12CPN, that is a Land Rover Range Rover 4.4 diesel. We'll order an air filter, we'll order an oil filter, and we'll order a pollen filter, add that to basket. When I go to checkout now, up pops pouch, and it automatically applies the best discount code. It's just testing them as we speak. And there we go, I've saved £34.87. How good's that? It didn't take any time, did it? It should have been £77.47, and after pouch's discount codes, it's £42.60. So check out, get those delivered. I'll drop those with my mechanic. What's good is that Pouch works with over 3,000 UK websites, which is more than any other similar product. So you can use it on sites such as John Lewis, Game, Goldsmiths. So don't think this won't be relevant to you, because it will. It's also very easy to download. You just download the extension and then pin it to your browser. It couldn't be simpler. And they've just launched something called Pouch Points. So even if there are no discount codes available, you can still earn these points with participating retailers. And those points can be redeemed for gift cards. So make sure you download Pouch now by clicking on the link in the top of this video description. Right, so those parts are ordered. Now my plan is to run it to the workshop, get the engine serviced, get the gearbox serviced. Then once those bits are done, I'll take it to the Valises and get a full detail clean on this car because the interior needs a good spruce up and the exterior needs a good buff and 
then I think it should look a million dollars. Oh, I've also got to refurbish the wheels. So it'll be a busy week, won't it? That's if it doesn't throw on any other warning lights or any other issues. But so far, so good. Shall we take her for a spin then? Let's give it a drive and see what it's like. Well, it drives very well. I can't actually remember the last time I was in an L322. It's been a while. That's both good and bad because one, I've forgotten how much I like them, but two, you forget how old they are now. So this one just feels, just feels heavier and older. For example, the doors don't have soft close, so you really have to slam them shut, but they do have a satisfying bank vault type clunk to them. I'd say the seats are way more comfortable than the L405, without a doubt. It all just feels softer. It's definitely wallowier, if that's a word, more wallowy. The seller was quite accurate with his description of the bouncy ride. Whenever you go over a bump, the back just kind of bounces. It's quite unnerving. So now I've driven it, I definitely think that that's the shock absorbers. When working on suspension components, you can't just change one, you've got to change them as a pair. I can't imagine them being cheap. There is something about the L3 too though. It feels like more of a, more of a workhorse than a limousine. That reminds me actually, I had a comment on Instagram when I posted a picture of this on my story. And I can't remember the guy's name now, so I apologize. But his comment made perfect sense. It was so good, I wish I'd thought of it. He said that the L405 is a better car, but the L322 is a better Range Rover. And I do totally agree. I know exactly where he's coming from. Because like I say, the L322 still feels like a, like a proper off-roader. It feels like a car that you could take on a field and get muddy and you wouldn't really care. It feels like it can cope with it. Whereas the L405 does feel like, a, like an S-Class Mercedes. It's a proper luxury car that can also go off-road. If you think about what the Range Rover was designed for, its actual purpose when it was released back in the 70s, it was supposed to be a farm vehicle that the farmer could use at the weekend and take his wife out to dinner in. It was supposed to be agricultural, but with a few nice luxuries. And that's exactly what the L322 is. For what I use mine for, I prefer the L405 because it suits my needs better. Mine never leaves the tarmac. But if I were a little bit more farmy or, you know, worked with my hands, I think I'd have an L322. Well, I'm quietly impressed with this so far. Apart from the bouncy rear suspension, the only other fault I can find, or the only warning light on the dash, is informing me that one of the key batteries is low. So, that's a 75 pence solution. Jumping in this from my 2015 Range Rover is a bit of a shock because everything does feel a bit dated. You'll recognize lots of BMW switches that I'd forgotten about. For example, look at the sunroof button. It's straight out of an E38. Nothing wrong with it, but you just forget these things. Having said that, the more I drive it, the more I'm getting quite smitten with it. Yes, it's not as sharp to drive as the L405, but you're never going to throw this into bends, are you? Right then, let me crack on with my job list, and I'll catch up with you shortly. Ah, oh, there you are. Right, well I finally finished my L322 project, and what a transformation. It now looks and drives like a car half its age. I'm overwhelmed. I'm fully armed with all my bills, so in a second I'm going to go through every single penny I've spent on this car. A little bit of a spoiler alert for you, it was more than my £1,500 initial budget. Surprise, surprise. Right, anyway, let me find somewhere to pull over. I had the full engine service done, so we've changed the oil filter plus the oil plus the air filters plus the fuel filter plus the pollen filter, um, and also then it's had the two rear shock absorbers, because if you remember they were very bouncy and I couldn't replace just one, one of them had burst but when you're doing suspension things, you've got to change them in pairs. So it's had two new shock absorbers. It says electronic rear shock absorbers. I don't know what that means exactly, but they were 590 pounds for the pair. So with the labor plus the parts, that service cost came to 1,022 pounds and 70 pence. Then after that, it had the gearbox serviced. That cost 240 pounds. So it's had a new sump pan and filter and fresh fluid. And my mechanic there at the gearbox centre said that it, it hadn't been done before. It was the original sump and the original oil. And it was quite, quite black. So it was quite a good job that I had that done. But that was it. My mechanic couldn't find anything else wrong with it. Which for a 92,000 mile 10 year old Range Rover I thought was quite impressive. Next up, what else did we do? I had the key batteries replaced. So they were £2 each. That's £4. That was the mechanical preparation done. So all I had to do then was the cosmetic which was quite a big job to be fair. If you remember, the wheels were corroded quite badly and they looked a mess. So I booked it in at Prestige Wheels over in Bredbury. They stripped the wheels and then powder coated them and they look like new. That cost me 312 pounds, including the VAT. I also ordered four genuine Land Rover wheel centers because the old ones were corroded. They cost 52 pounds. 
Then it was time for its proper detailed valet. So for that, I went down to Tameside Valeting and they did a full valet on it because it was quite grubby inside. And then they spent hours and hours and hours detailing the exterior. They got their, I think it's called a micrometer to, to gauge the, the thickness of the paint. They did every single panel to figure out whether it had any paint or how far they could go back with the buff. And it turned out this car hasn't had any paint. It was all original. So they were quite confident that they'd get all the marks out and they did. As you can see from the pictures, there was loads of moss on it and green stuff growing everywhere. And both sides of the car were littered in very fine scratches where it had driven down country lanes. And they've got all those out. I'm over the moon with the job. It now looks absolutely stunning. And when I picked it up, believe it or not, the sun was out. I know, hard to believe. But you could see the metallic flakes in the paint. And I hadn't seen that before. It just looked like the day it left the factory. That whole detailing and valeting process cost me 350 quid. So let's do some math, shall we? I paid 13,500 pounds for the car. I spent 1,022 and 70 pence at the mechanics. I spent another 240 getting the gearbox serviced. 312 pounds on the wheels. 52 pounds on the wheel centers. 350 pounds at the detailers and four pounds on the batteries. Let's not forget that. So the total spend came to 15,480 pounds and 70 pence. So it was 480 pounds over my initial budget, but I now think it looks like every single penny of 18,995. In fact, to be honest, I think I've already sold it. A very good mate of mine wanted it for himself, so I've done him a bit of a deal on it. So yeah, thank you once again for joining me throughout this whole process. Hope you enjoyed it. Give the video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Don't forget to check out Pouch. You can download that for free. And yeah, cheers guys. I'll see you next time.